In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the construction process of our six-foot octagon table. Now, the software program you're looking at right now is called SketchUp. SketchUp is a free download, and you definitely want to download that program and open up the SketchUp file that we provide you. It's the file with the SKP extension. This will actually be the lifeblood of your build process because you already have a finished product in front of you. And this is somewhat complicated, not terribly so, but somewhat complicated. And if you just follow the materials cut list that we provided for you, once you have all your parts cut, the actual assembly process is pretty straightforward. Now, if you have any questions about the materials cut list or the various angles that are involved, please do, or any questions really for that matter, just reach out and give us a call and we'll be happy to walk you through uh, this process. Because while this project is pretty straightforward, is pretty simple, uh, it can be somewhat complicated as well. So here's what I'm going to recommend you do. I'm going to recommend that you watch this video all the way through front to back twice before you ever cut a board. Trust me, it's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of frustration, and a lot of headache. Okay, uh, I've built many of these tables. They go together really quickly once you have a good understanding of exactly how they do go together. And it is helpful to have a partner uh, build this project. You don't absolutely have to have a partner. You definitely do it on your own, but it would be somewhat helpful for you as well. Okay, now you don't need to know anything about SketchUp really, but we do have a SketchUp video on our YouTube channel that will walk you through the, the most important things you need to know about SketchUp in order to get the most out of your uh, 3D models that we provide you. Okay, So, of course, we have a real-world model here. In order to rotate around our model, we use this function called Orbit. And we can move this model all the way around and, and do all kinds of great stuff with it. And it's, it's just real helpful be able to zoom in, zoom out, look at all the connections, and so forth, okay? So that's going to be super helpful for you. So that's one thing. The other thing you're going to want to probably want to do with this model is pull off dimensions. So, for example, we grab our tape measure tool here, and let's say I want to know how wide these boards are on top. Boom. Oh, they're five and a half inch boards. Okay, great. Uh, how long is this board? Well, this one is 47 inches. Perfect. So you see, it's very helpful uh, to just know some of the very basics of SketchUp. And that's really all we need for this. We need to be able to rotate our model, and we need to be able to hold dimensions. Those are the two most important things that we need to be able to do. And I just showed you how to do that. Grab your tape measure tool. How wide is this seat board right here? Boom, boom, it's five and a half inches. Excellent. How wide is this board right here? Boom, boom, oh, two by four, it's three and a half inches. And this one? It is five and a half inches. Excellent. So we know now what, what these different components are and how to pull dimensions. It's really, really simple. If I want to know the footboard of this right here, 21 inches. Of course, you have that on your materials cut list, which we'll pop over to here. So definitely pay attention to your materials cut list. Just follow this to a T, and you'll have no issues actually putting it together, okay? So on page five here, or four, I'm sorry. So you see that first board is where we cut our legs, right here. And then we move on and so forth. So you did, it's all laid out for you so you get the maximum use of your materials. We do have a materials break lot, uh, breakdown of the total cost that you can expect. Now these five quarter boards, these five quarter by eight, uh, those are actually an inch and a quarter thick decking boards. Okay, now you could, if you want to, just use all two by sixes. Okay, the five and a quarter boards are the same thickness or width uh, of our two by six, but the thickness a two by six is an inch and a half, or five quarter is a true inch and a quarter. Okay, so like I said, the five quarter boards you could just get ten two by sixes. You can see they're roughly the same cost, so there's not much cost difference there. The thing I like about the five quarter is because we use five quarter for the top and we use five quarter for the seats. And the, and the five quarter deck boards have a nice rounded edge on both ends. So there's on, on both long edges, it has a, a, a nice rounded edge. And I just think that looks good on the top and also looks good on the seats. 
but certainly two by sixes could be used as well. And the cost factor is minimal. The other thing about using the five quarter, because it's only an inch and a quarter thickness, you are going to save yourself some weight. And this thing can get heavy to move. There's a lot of wood here, and once it's all put together, it's going to be take a couple of people to move. And so that five quarter is just a little bit lighter than our two by sixes. Now let's head back over to SketchUp and dig in and take a look at how this goes together. You're going to be pretty surprised at how simple and easy this goes together. You really are. Um, so what we've done for you is we've created a series of scenes inside our SketchUp file. And we're going to go ahead and just get started here. And I'll walk you through this build process. It's real simple. So here's our model. Here's our finished product. Let's look at step one. And there is step one. So we're going to take our leg on our work table. And we're going to center our 2x4, okay? And if we go back over here to our materials covered, so let's go back to page 1 here and see what this actually is, okay? Inner tabletop support. So these are 24 and 3 eighths long, and they're cut at 45 degrees. So just kind of go back and forth that these are our legs, these are our inner tabletop supports, and this is how it's going to go together, okay? So... You grab a leg and you grab a, a two by four and you can line it up to the inside, you can line it up to the outside. You can split the difference and line it up in the middle. It really doesn't matter. Typically, I will line the inside of my two by four to the edge of my two by six leg. Typically, that's what I do. All right, now how do we assemble these? Well, what I would do to assemble these is I would go ahead and use either two and a half inch deck screws or three and a half inch deck screws. Really, it's your preference. Okay, you can use two and a half or three and a half and come in from the side here into our two by six. Now, a lot of your deck screws are designed where you don't have to have a pilot hole because they're self, uh, self tapping or self drilling deck screws. That's really what you prefer to use. Um, but you can't, so you can go ahead, if your wood is splitting, you can go ahead and pre drill everything, but you really shouldn't have to if you get the right kind of deck screws. So, again, we're going to use two and a half or three and a half inch deck screws from our leg into our 2x4 tabletop support. Then what we'll do is we'll come over here and we'll add our second leg. And again, we're just going to come in with our screws from the outside right here and come into the side. Then what we're going to do is we're going to actually build two assemblies of this. Okay, so you're going to need two assemblies just like this. And then once we have our two assemblies built, so, so now we've got our one assembly built, once we have our two assemblies built, then we're going to bring in these cross supports. Well, how do we get these drilled in? Well, usually what I do is, is right about here, I take a two and a half inch screw and go, so we're going to go through this board, we're going to go through the leg, and we're going to go through this board. So you could use three and a half or three inch screws here as well. Either, and in fact, three and a half inch, or if you have three and a half inch or three inch screws, that's probably what I would prefer to do. So I do one kind of close to the edge, and then come back a little bit, and then I come in from this way, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll spin this bad boy around, and I'll drive a three and a half inch from this way too. And I do that on all these boards. So we're going to go three and a half inch this way, we're going to go a three and a half inch that way, and then we're going to spin it around, and we're going to do a three and a half inch or three inch, two of them. Right here, one kind of close and one back a little bit. One kind of close, one back a little bit. One from the inside this way. And again, we'll spin it around and drive one in from this way. Okay? And I do that to both sides. And now we have our completed box. So that's our light support setup. Now, what we're going to do here is we have two 12 inch scrap blocks of wood. And we're just going to set those in place right there at the corner, so where that 2x4 is, set your strap block right there on your tabletop, that's 12 inches, okay? And then we're going to take our long uh, support, our long leg support, okay? Now, remember, uh, if you just grab our tape measure, 68 3 eighths, okay? So we're going to grab our long leg support, and we're going to go ahead and set it in place. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure, obviously, that the space right here, so we can grab our dimension, our tape measure here, and it says that that's supposed to be about nine inches. Okay, that's what it's telling us. From that corner 
to here is about nine inches. And if we spin this around and, and grab a tape measure from that corner, again, about nine to nine thirty seconds, and we're going to be real precise, okay? So in real life, that's just what you want to double check. You want to double check however yours is set up. You know, it could be slightly different because of our legs and how we put it all together. It could be slightly different than what I'm showing you. But we just want to make sure from the face of our leg to the tip of our seat support, it's the same or pretty darn close to it on both sides. Pretty simple stuff. Okay? So once we get that into place, then let's talk about the front. So we're going to take one of those 12-inch locks and we're going to do our short leg support. And look, if we spin this around, so remember that was 9 and 9, 30 seconds. Well, let's run the tape here. From here to here, 9 and 9, 30 seconds. Of course, it's going to be exact because we're working with the computer. But in real life, it may be off just slightly, and that's okay. It's not as long as it's close. It doesn't really matter too much. So we use our 12-inch spacer there. We lay our short board on top, right? And then what I would do is grab your square, your regular carpenter square, and just square this corner, okay? And then once we have that, on the back side of this, we can run two and a half inch screws. It's certainly sufficient. I run three of them. But you could use three or even three and a half inch screws if you really wanted to. And then here, I would put four screws. So one, two, three, four, kind of like a, just in a square pattern. Real simple, okay? Screw those into the sides, screw those into the back. Our next step, we move that block over a little bit, and then we're going to do the same thing on this side. So we, that's our block, it's just our helper to keep our spacing. And then again, I would use our carpenter square right here at the corner, drive in three screws in the back, and then I would use four right here in kind of a square pattern. All right, now once we have this assembly done, we've got to take care of the other side, right? So now we've got to take care of the other side. What I would do, because look, if we, if we assemble it the exact same way on this side, we can't get to the back side of these right here, right? So here's what I'm going to show you to do. So I'm going to show you to take these, and let's just move these out of the way for a moment. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to uh, do, do some uh, computer work here. So let me get these flipped over, and then we'll, I'll show you what we should be doing. All right, so what we should really do in this particular situation is build these upside down. Let me show you this. So take, so for this step, go ahead and take your piece and just make sure that these angles are reversed. So reverse on your feet here, reverse, okay? And now we can use the first setup as kind of a guide how to do the second setup. We have access to the back side for those three screws, blah, 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 right? And then we've got our 12-inch blocks. So then we can take this and we can flip it back around. And then we can go ahead and position this. Let's go ahead. You can set that right on those 12 inch blocks, and then we'll kind of have it like it's supposed to be. I'm going to just kind of grab this right here. There we go. Now those are the exact position to where they should be to see how that's all going to go together, okay? So now we've got all of our base frame made. What's the next step? So these are the 21 inch feet and they have to be centered on here. So we'll center those up. 
and we will put two or three screws down here. I would recommend using three and a half inch screws, the biggest screws you got, even four inch ones, uh, wouldn't hurt to put, to put these feet on. And then we've got our 15 inch boards that we'll just go ahead and run those down. And I, you can use two and a half, three inch, three and a half inch, whatever you've got. Uh, we can go ahead and use those and put those on. And then finally, our cross braces. So you see there, you just jam it in the corner there, and wherever it hits, it here is wherever it hits. And I would put in two screws there, two screws here. These are somewhat structural, but mostly uh, they are decorative. And then we can put in our little uh, supports for our seat board. And here's the key uh, dimension. You want to make sure right here that this distance is roughly two and a half inches, okay? And if you wanted to get a bit more precise, we can flip these over and grab the dimension from this way. So from here to here, four and a quarter. So we can go ahead and draw a line four and a quarter, and then we can go ahead and put in all of our seat supports. And so here you can see what we've done. Is here's our first seat board. We always put your outer seat boards in first. Okay. Now, here's something I want you to keep in mind, just as a guide. You see how, how far off the edge of that seat that board is? So that's okay. Like, and down here, you can see it's not off by much at all. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're positioning your seat board. There's no real exact way to do it. Um, the only thing I would suggest that you kind of pay attention to, in the model, I have these two seat boards touching. Okay, in reality, most of the ones that I've built, I left a half inch gap there. So that's really ultimately up to you. We'll go ahead and put in our inner seat board. And now you can look and see how our inner seat board goes with that. We we'll put in two screws there, two screws over here. Pretty straightforward as far as putting in those seat boards go. Okay, and so once you have one grouping done, then all you're going to do do the same exact thing to the other three. And that's basically it as far as the base goes for our picnic table. So all of that pretty straightforward stuff. Now let's talk about the top. Because the top, while it's not complicated, it does kind of uh, take a little bit of work to do our top. Now, when we cut our boards, okay, we cut these boards, these blue looking boards, we're using a 22 and a half degree angle, and we have to put these together. Now you could do like we did, where you can put in some screws from the outside. I actually use pocket holes uh, to put these together. So you could do pocket holes, or you could just run a screw from the outside right through, and, and that would work too. But uh, pocket holes seem to work pretty well also. And so all you have to do is obviously just screw those together. If you're going to use pocket holes, you just screw one together and then screw the next one together and then you have pocket holes over here to screw that one to that one. You only need pocket holes on one end of your board. So you don't need pocket holes on both sides unless you just want to use extra screws and make it extra sturdy, I guess. I can tell you this, the very first one I built, I did pocket holes on both sides of the boards. And so we had, so on this connection, we'd have a screw going from this direction into this board, and then we'd have a screw going in from this board to this one. And to me, it didn't offer any extra support than just only having pocket screws going one direction. That's entirely up to you. Now, what I did in mine is I happened to have some four inch screws, some kind of big deck screws, and I went ahead and ran one in from both directions just to offer some extra support to those pocket screws. So, but that, I did that from the outside. Kind of like I showed you earlier with these supports. Remember we came in from the outside? That's what I did. I just came in a big old four inch screw this way and a big old four inch screw that way at every connection. But that's entirely up to you. And then just follow along with our, our cut plan. Start here in the middle. Okay, with our middle board. And these are all 22 and a half degree cuts. 22 and a half degrees, 22 and a half degrees. Rather than follow the cut list exactly, as far as cutting your top boards, 
I would go ahead and just set the board in place and scribe it from below and then cut the line and then scribe the next one and so on and so forth. The spacing between boards, I used a carpenter's pencil, the thickness of a carpenter's pencil. So it's not, not quite a half inch thick, but that seemed to work uh, really good. Give us just a little bit of drainage. Um, and and then whatever this end board is, it is. We've got plenty of width there to cut that end board. And that's it. Guys, that is the gist of putting together uh, this this uh, picnic table. Okay? So we know how to use our dimension tool here in SketchUp. I've showed you several times throughout the video. Um, if you have any questions about dimension, that's really how to the best way to go about uh, getting those dimensions you refer to the model um, and also refer to your cut list because that's how long your boards will be cut. So refer to both and I think you won't have any problem with the bill. But if you have questions, you've got our phone number or just a phone call away. Thanks for watching.